Hi and welcome back to another video today from Computex 2023. We were supposed to shoot at the ASUS booth, but it was a bit loud and it was not so convenient to look at the card because we are looking at the ASUS Matrix, the 4090 Matrix, which is an amazing card. And ASUS was so kind to let us take it to this kind of private meeting room so we have more peace and can look at this beauty more in detail. So generally speaking, uh, going to the past, uh, the Matrix card was usually the same as the Strix uh, with maybe a different cooler, but this time it's a completely different design. It has a completely different cooler, as you can see. It's an AIO-based solution with a 380mm uh, thick radiator, which is already quite amazing. That's a lot thicker than what you would usually find on a normal uh, GPU AIO, so already that will give you better temperatures because that will certainly be required. The stock power target on this card is 500 watt, which should allow you to get a very decent boost. The boost is set to 2070 megahertz, but obviously during gaming sessions, obviously higher boost is expected, maybe 2800 to 3000 plus megahertz, depending on the load. That should be very interesting. You can put up uh, the power target to up to 600 watt above that obviously with AIO also wouldn't make much sense and from what we've seen be, uh, previously with 4090 cards you would also not be able to get much more clock out of it even if you would increase it further to maybe like 700 watt. Okay, um, what makes this card kind of unique um, apart from the cooling which is pretty interesting, I mean it's a full aluminium shell, it could look like plastic on the first side but it's definitely a full aluminium shell, is that this card is cooled with liquid metal. Well, not cooled by liquid metal, but the interface between the cold plate and the GPU is liquid metal, which from my perspective is straight going to be very interesting because it has certain requirements to it. Obviously, you will have to nickel plate the, the copper base, which is one thing and I guess the easier part, but you would also have to seal it off so the liquid metal cannot escape, cannot short anything. And that's something I certainly want to see. We also tried to open the cart. They kind of gave us permission, at least when I pulled out my iFixit kit, um, they started sweating a little bit, but um, yeah, it's just a mock-up card, so it's not fully retail, which means that, um, yeah, the backplate, for example, is just glued on instead of screwed on, and that's why I don't want to remove it, because I would, yeah, maybe damage the card, and since this has to go back on the show, show floor, it's something I don't want to risk, uh, because it's already a like an honor to uh, just have the card in our hands here and be able to shoot this video right here. So I don't want to overstretch it. And when it comes to the cooling, they also are using a different pump. So it's not a normal ASTEC pump. It's a like completely different design, which has 50% more flow rate than what you would usually find on an AIO pump, which is also required because dissipating 500 watt is certainly a challenge with an AIO because usually the pump speed uh, it's quite low, which also means that the flow rate is a little bit low and wouldn't make it so easy to dissipate this amount of heat. Also, the PCB is a completely different design. It's not the same as the Strix. It's a com completely fresh design. I asked about Coliwine and they said they're quite confident that it should be much better than before. That's something we will definitely have to test. And if everything works out, we will also get the opportunity to look at a PCB, but that will be on a later stage, but probably still in this video. Obviously the light in a meeting room like this is maybe not ideal to shoot a video like that, but still I think it's it's very good so you can get a first hand impression of the card. I also spotted, if you look through the window right here, you can see like all the way down there, it's a little bit of nickel plated copper. So definitely the cold plate will be nickel plated. I'm confident of that. And apart from that, it's a very nice and unique design. That's something I absolutely appreciate. It looks much different from what we've seen before or in the previous years. And as I pointed out before, it's a full aluminum shell. We have a 12 volt high power connector as expected. And that's how the card looks from the back. And I will now try my best to get either the PCB or the cooler or maybe both. So I'm quickly back at the booth to just show how the card looks like if it's running when it comes to the RGB light. As you can see also the radiator, but I mean, even though the card looks like running, as you can see, there is no CPU in the socket. So obviously it's also just kind of like a mock-up sample, but I will try my best to either find an, like an empty PCB or maybe find a way to disassemble this one. We just continued onwards to the Asus Tough stand, which is just like right across, it's in the next booth. And they are showcasing a board without cables. And that's a concept which we've seen before previously also by different vendors. 
But what's a bit unique to this board is that you cannot only find like the power connectors and also I.O. on the back, but it also has an additional power connector for the card. So also the graphics card can be plugged into this slot right here. And here we have the RTX 4070 BTF that has this additional gold finger connector on the bottom. And I also asked them like, how much power could this actually deliver? And I said they tested this for over 1000 watt, which is certainly impressive. So it would all, not only be capable for a 4070, but also like for a 4090, even with overclocking. And it would just simply plug right into the board like that. I just noticed that this is bent in front, but you will plug it in here. And this way, the power will be delivered through the board to the card. And what's also kind of cool is that if you turn it around, we have three times eight pin and one 12 volt high power. And you can choose either of them. So you can, if you have like an older PSU, you don't have to use the 12 volt high power. You can just use the ordinary eight pin connectors. Theoretically, you can also plug all of them if you think that your 4070 requires like 1000 watt or something. But overall, that's a concept I would love to see actually make it to the market because for many years we have seen these kind of concepts like without cables, some kind of stealth mods. I think stealth is what Gigabyte called it. And what the reason is why they usually don't do it is because they are afraid that they're losing some sort of market share because I don't know, one case is not compatible or a card is not compatible. And then they think, okay, we lose maybe 2% market share because it's not compatible to all the ATX standards, so they don't do it. But I wish they, that they would actually do it. It would be very beneficial because in the end, I mean, we're like, we have all the cables in the back and we have to route them all the way through the front and then plug them in. It doesn't make any sense. So having the connectors on the back would actually make a lot of sense. So yeah, so much from ASUS. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.